All right, so today I'm just doing a short video on the three-part mathematics lesson. I had originally heard about this during my first practicum placement, and I thought, why not share with the world what the three-part math lesson is? So just a general idea, three-part math lesson builds problem solving, and it gets students to view themselves as mathematicians. And if students are more likely to view themselves as mathematicians, they might show more interest in the subject. And it also builds self-efficacy. So self-efficacy. Self-efficacy is one's ability to complete tasks and reach goals, a person's belief in his or her ability to succeed in a particular situation. So through the three-part math lesson, you want to build strong self-efficacy. And self-efficacy plays a major role in how goals, tasks, and challenges are approached. Some positives. Uh, viewing challenging problems as something to be mastered. So if students see a math problem, they're more likely to want to approach it and not feel intimidated by it. Uh, develop a deeper, under, deeper interest in activities in which they participate. Uh, form a stronger sense of commitment to their interests and in activities and recover quickly from setbacks and disappointments, which I feel is most important because you know what? We all face some sort of disappointment and you want to get back up and when, if you fall. So if, especially with this troubling math question, if you can't get it first time, keep trying. And also the three part math lesson promotes collaboration and encourage students to think about mathematics. So now we're going to move into a little chart I made. So I'm just going to hold up here for a few seconds. So if you're interested in finding that chart, if you want to Google search the viewer's guide, the three part mathematics lesson, which is where I got most of my information today, you can find that chart there if I didn't hold it up quick enough. All right, so basically it said the plating processes. So you want to build with the Ontario curriculum because that's where you want to start. You want to know what key concepts they need to learn. And then you want to move to the big ideas in mathematics. So what do you want to cover? What big ideas do you want them to learn? Next is you want to select or design appropriate and challenging problem. So you can either find one from one of the current textbooks that you're using or create your own challenging math problem for your class. Next, you want to plan for the math by doing the math. So as a teacher, you should be solving the math for yourself. And then lastly, I found this most important, anticipate possible solutions to the problem. So you want to see which way they're going to think. So there's not always one way to solve one math question. Maybe there's a whole bunch. And also you want to see maybe anticipate some problems our students are going to have. So then you know if you're going to encounter those, what you what steps you would take to resolve them. All right, so first we are going to move into part one, B4. All right, so first before you start to introduce your meat of your lesson, your big challenging question, you want to start off with a brief collaborative uh, approach. So a getting started question. So these usually connect to the following set question that you're going to present in part two. So you want to discuss the big ideas and see what connections and what the students can take from this question. So the first section is very brief. Next is part two, during. So this is your meat. You really want to emphasize this part of the lesson. So you do a quick brief review of what the students had learned from your getting started question, and then you'll move into introducing your second problem. So you want to have to students answer two questions from the problem you have put up there. What is the problem asking and what information do you need to solve the problem? So you really want to get students to think about what methods and approaches they should take taking the, like going about answering this question. So I took the liberty of putting it in like a little chart form and you may find this helpful of maybe posting on the board, on the whiteboard, and as a class you answer the questions as a whole. Because maybe working collaboratively, the students will be able to come up with a whole bunch of different solutions. I know in my class they really enjoyed writing on the whiteboard, so any chance they had to answer a question, even if they got it wrong, they're, they're more likely to come up and try, which is all you want. All right, so lastly, you're going to move into part three, which is after. So... You want the students to review the work they just did and you want to identify their thought processes. So you're going to start with consolidation. So you want to look at the students' work and see what they came up with. So maybe have a few students present their solutions of what they came up with and see if students had the same way method of solving the question. Or maybe there was different ones, which is fine. Just because one question is held differently doesn't mean the other one is wrong. And then next, you're going to go finally conclude with a summary chart with all the main ideas of what a whole class has learned from the lesson. 
Again, I would do a similar thing of making a chart and then you want to put maybe big ideas and what I learned. So again, you could do this individually or as a whole class. With my class, they enjoyed working together. And so that's a three-part math lesson. But never forget the most important thing, reflection. You can reflect before, after, during. It's always important to reflect. Even the teacher should be reflecting. So I hope my lesson helped you somehow and you will all use a three-part math lesson in your in your possible future classrooms or classrooms now. Thanks.